Pelosi versus Mnuchin. Boy, the tides have turned. A week ago and a day ago, last, not this Friday, but the Friday before that, I said that Steve Mnuchin needs to release his numbers, he needs to say what he's offering, go bigger, go higher, and make it very clear that Nancy Pelosi is not accepting him. He, his offer, accepting his offer, he then did exactly what I had been recording. He released his numbers in an NBC News report a week ago today. He then issued this press release a week ago today, which was the first that we've ever seen during these negotiations, that had his letterhead on it and had Mark Meadows' name co-signed on it, that said, I've offered enough money and that she's being difficult. From there started a real good push to show that Nancy Pelosi is the one that's singularly responsible for you not having a stimulus deal today. But with the tides really pushing against her and crashing very hard, this afternoon Nancy Pelosi gave her own ultimatum. The question is whether that's going to make her look worse or look better. This is Pelosi versus Mnuchin. Good afternoon, everybody. This is Pelosi vs. Medusian with big developments across the board today and very exciting, great news that ultimately helps you get your second stimulus checks. I really appreciate you for tuning in. I'll be going over the breaking news that just happened in the last few minutes. Go to the Furnace Channel, subscribe. 296,000 subscribers, 4,000 away from 300,000. Let's get there. Also, like this video. In this video, I'm going to be going over why everything has changed in a week since this press release was issued by Steve Mnuchin and what's happening today as a lot of things are crashing against Nancy Pelosi very quickly. All right, let me get to the breaking news. The breaking news is that Nancy Pelosi is on the pushback. She's seen that too many things are coming at her and so in the last few minutes she issued a news statement. The news statement says basically the following. Give me my way or the highway in the next 48 hours or there will be no further negotiations before the... There will be no ability to get a second stimulus package done before the election. Okay, let's first analyze the statement before we go to the why the statement is actually working against her. First, her statement that my way or the highway is actually the same position she's had since July. So that doesn't really play well to the public eye. She's been accused of saying my way or the highway for months, but as I'm going to explain to you in a second, it really became a national issue of discussion in the last seven days. Today, she repeated that same discussion. She didn't change her discussion, and that ultimately doesn't look good. Second, her claim that nothing can be done after 48 hours before election night is totally, ridiculously unfounded. Uh, it, it is pairing a hope that a viewer listening to that comment will not understand how Congress works. <coughs> Excuse me. The way it works is it only takes two days for something to become a law. One day for the Senate to vote on it, one day for the House to vote on it, and the President could sign it by the end of the day. We're a half a month away from the election night. Why are you cutting off everything on Wednesday? Well, now let me get to the backstory. Why is she doing this? And why is she basically on the pushback? The reason is why everything is coming for her very strongly. Let me explain how we got here and how she didn't plan this accordingly well. In May, she was not the villain of the second stimulus. It was Mitch McConnell. Mitch McConnell was tarred and, tarred and feathered on this channel on a regular basis because when Nancy Pelosi had something ready, Mitch McConnell said, hold up, I'm not doing any of this because, one, I don't know any economics yet, which was ridiculous. We knew economics by May. And two, he said, um, Americans who are on unemployment are lazy and getting rich off the American dollar. Okay, those are some horrible comments. I said at the time he was disparaging the American worker. He was. Mitch McConnell was about as bad as bad could be at the time. But slowly, people started to see why $3.4 trillion was not a really good bill, Nancy Pelosi couldn't explain her own bill. And then came two weeks of negotiations between her and Steve Mnuchin, at which time he came up with good numbers. He came up with good offers. 
Her response was not to explain how her numbers were good. Her response was to talk about words, superlatives, chilling, going hungry. And ultimately, there was no defense for what she was doing because she wasn't explaining her numbers to the American people. As the weeks went on, the deal offers stayed at about $1 trillion, and then came the problem solvers. When the problem solvers introduced their $1.5 trillion bill, I said, Purple Power, do your thing, get Steve Mnuchin to co-sign the $1.5 trillion bill, get all Republicans to co-sign it, and show to Nancy Pelosi this is the bill to do. And you got it done. Purple Power, you got Steve Mnuchin to co-sign 1.5. You got Donald Trump to co-sign 1.5. In fact, today, Lindsey Graham says, I support the Problem Solvers Bill 1.5. Everyone supported the Problem Solvers Bill 1.5. In fact, Mitch McConnell's press release about his bills next week says, I support the Problem Solvers 1.5 bill, $1.5 trillion bill. It was very bad. It was very bad for Nancy Pelosi because at the same breath, she said that the Problem Solvers don't represent her that they're all a bunch of Republicans. They're not. They're Republicans and Democrats. That they're not in her caucus. They are. They're House members and they're also Senate members. That there was no dissent against her. There was. And ultimately what she did was, you know what? I will introduce a bill to the Senate, to the House, and I will get my caucus to agree upon it. Well, her caucus did not. They split. By that point, the issue was very clear with Mnuchin and Pelosi that her amount of 2.2 was unfounded, but Mnuchin was too low. The president was too low, and ultimately, Pelosi lost her biggest opportunity. Her biggest opportunity was to slam the president and say, hey, you should be at $2 trillion. You should be at one eight. You should be at one nine. You are at $1 trillion. What the hell is $1 trillion? That doesn't do anything. She would have absolutely had a winning golden ticket in that argument. Instead, what she said was, don't come back to me unless you give me exactly what I want. That didn't work. It looked like she didn't want to negotiate. And today, that was her statement again. Don't come back to me unless you give me exactly what I want. Well... It all really became a Main Street water cooler, well-understood moment on a Thursday night when Nancy Pelosi appeared on CNN and Wolf Blitzer said, what's wrong with $1.8 trillion? No answer. The video today is worth is has been seen by 2.1 million viewers on CNN's channel, which generally does about 300,000 or 200,000 views a video. That video is at 2.1 2.1 million. It didn't play well for her at all. Thursday. Donald Trump appeared on Savannah Guthrie on a, at a town hall that said, I'm not responsible for not giving a stimulus package. I'm willing to sign a bill right now. She won't sign a bill because she's trying to do it as a Democratic win for Joe Biden. And then came Mitch. Mitch McConnell on, Mon on Tuesday and Wednesday will introduce two bills, all, both of which were the subject of press releases from him over the night, overnight. And those press releases slam Nancy Pelosi every third sentence. You see what's going on. A massive hit that started with Steve Mnuchin last weekend saying, hey, I've offered enough, and now everyone pushing back. What's important to understand as we talk about Pelosi versus Mnuchin today is that Mnuchin has really been dealing with a fake narrative with Pelosi for several days. And the problem is that Pelosi is still doing this fake narrative. On Friday, Steve Mnuchin appeared on Squawk Box, CNN, and said, you know what, we're going higher. Congratulations, we're going higher. 1.8? We're going higher. You know what, I'm giving her more money for testing and tracing. She wanted more money for testing and tracing. And actually, I'm going higher. Oh. What else are you giving him, her, Steve? Um, <clears throat> well, she wanted more money for, excuse me, she wanted her language for testing and tracing. So you know what? I'm calling her up today. I'm saying you can have your, <coughs> you can have your language for testing and tracing. Let me give you the quote. Um, Nancy Pelosi, uh, he says, the issue is getting overblown. We've agreed to 178 overall for health. It's an extraordinary amount of money. We agree that the Democrats with $75 billion going to contract tracing. We have been focused on it is the language around the testing. And when I spoke to Pelosi today, <coughs> I'm going to tell her that we're going to let the tracing issue stand in the way. We're not going to let the tasting issue stand in the way. We'll fundamentally agree on their language. The issue is being overblown. <coughs> well... 
that was then. Today and yesterday, guess what Pelosi tried to do? She issued sentences as statements and statements after statements saying, hey, we don't have a deal on testing tracing because they don't want to use our language. Hello? She said there's still some language working and we can't agree to it. And so it's really been dragged on and just we just have no agreement on testing tracing. This is where pettiness becomes well understood by Main Street America. You just heard a person who said he's giving you exactly the number. You've accepted the number. And he said, I'm giving you the language also. And now you're saying he didn't give you exactly the exact language. Enough is enough, Nancy. Enough is enough. You're acting silly. This is where silliness really gets viewers very angry, gets the electorate very angry. People are waiting back for a stimulus check. <clears throat> They're waiting for hazard pay. They're waiting for FPUC to land on their bank account. And here is someone arguing over the language of and or or, or comma or punctuation <coughs> for testing or tracing. And what her position is, uh, you're missing a vowel in the third word. Uh, otherwise, we're not signing the bill. Don't come back to me within 48 hours unless you do exactly that comma and punctuation mark. It's that type of stuff that people just get irate about politicians. Pelosi today is pushing a fake narrative, a fake deal amount, and a fake language. Mnuchin, on the other hand, is stalling. He's moved too slow. He's had too slow a lash action. He's no, had not enough alignment with the GOP, and he's had minimal progress. The truth of the matter is that these two people have spent about 60 minutes a day talking about really almost nothing going very, very slowly. And then ultimately what's happened is that <coughs> you haven't gotten anywhere a progress. You haven't gotten people to go up where they need to go up or go down where they need to go down. Steve Mnuchin's current offer is about $1.85 trillion. It's really good. It's good, but it's not where it needs to be. It needs to be a two, and she needs to be a two. And ultimately, she doesn't move then what's going to happen? Uh, what's going to happen is that <clears throat> if you don't see this dragging out, if you don't see a deal by Mnuchin and Pelosi, then ultimately all the hands are focused back on the president, executive orders. There's a reason why I've been pushing with Purple Power for executive orders, because I've seen the cards that Nancy Pelosi holds. Her cards don't make sense. And when someone doesn't make sense, you have to get away from people that don't make sense. Let me explain what's going on. Nancy Pelosi's card is, don't do a deal, wait till after the election, then do a deal after the election. I don't think that card works, and I'll tell you why. If Trump loses and contests the election or doesn't contest the election, he's not going to sign an executive. He's not going to sign a bill that gives Joe Biden stimulus so that Joe Biden's economy can rebound. No. Who do you think? Do you think this president will actually help an economy under Joe Biden? No. The president will say, you have Joe Biden. Take care of it. I'm going. Goodbye. That's what's going to happen. And so ultimately what you're going to see is we're going to watch as Nancy Pelosi sits and waits till inauguration day and then introduce a bill to a new Senate, to a new House, to a new president, and that bill will be passed in March. And guess what? If she's so misguided to think that her current bill of $2.2 trillion, that's ostensibly $1.8 trillion of salary raises and this much stimulus, the truth of the matter is that $2 trillion doesn't work as stimulus when you're looking at it in March of next year. At that point, you need $6 trillion. And so ultimately, the question as we see here tonight with Mnuchin, Pelosi versus Mnuchin, is what will Pelosi and Mnuchin do 48 hours after her demand threat expires? Let me answer some of incredible questions from yesterday, and they were really good. Kimberly, you know what's crazy, Candace, to giving $2,000 a month for stimulus? Gary, Nancy's pissing off the American people more and more. I see a lot of Democrats voted out because they won't stand up against Nancy. Um, that's what I've been talking about. Jeannie, they're getting paid no matter how much the disaster. Connie, no one will ever, ever forget 2020, how the politicians failed the American people. Renee Spith, I love the 
power of the purple power family united together strong for each other maximo i really feel the house should be more transparent diana we need our money wr more stimulus danny go purple power la i love your pos po positivity <clears throat> it's rain cats and dogs and i just step in the poodle <laughs> a lot of the beautiful emojis in that comment scott uh kyle so such should like be crimes against humanity and treason brian at this point it's pointless callie um, help the American people. She's insane, Pelosi. Shannon, it's embarrassment to get so little. Carlita, the Congress should have should have to live off the seven hundred eighty three dollars a month that SSI recipients are receiving. Harado, oh my God, we're losing homes and people are living in the streets, and these tyrants are doing nothing. Please remember, my Purple Power family, vote all these people out of office. Amen. Seats for stimulus. I can't say it enough. Seats for stimulus. Diane, go Purple Power. Go Purple Power. Go go go. On to victory. Yes. Kelly Landy, I'm so sorry. I'm way down. I can't. I've already lost everything. I'm huddling in a blanket on the street. Blue Velvet, we need money. <clears throat> um, let me give you a, a, a sense of the remarks that Pelosi gave overnight. Drew Hamill, who's her self-appointed uh, liar in chief, uh, her press agent, says... Um, Decisions must be weighed by the made by the White House in order to demonstrate that the administration is serious about reaching a bipartisan agreement that provides Americans with the greatest needs for during the pandemic. Okay, that's just sort of petty. Um, it's also untrue. First of all, Nancy Pelosi is the most partisan person in this entire discussion. Everything she does is partisan. Second, to call the White House not serious when they're $1.8 trillion and you're a 2-2, uh, I think that's serious. Uh, you know, um, and that's exactly the wording that Wolf Blitzer had problems with when Nancy Pelosi said it to him. <clears throat> There's an array of different decisions, uh, provision, provision that must be addressed in the next 48 hours. How can it be addressed? All you, you people do is you work for, you know, 30 minutes on the phone per day. It's with that that we really remain focused and dedicated, attentive to the finish line. And really, you know, when we get a fake narrative like that we're getting uh, today and we're going to get a lot more tomorrow, we know how to get through this. So go to the Finance Channel, subscribe. Subscribe because we're almost there. We are really a good community that is laser focused on what we need to get through and to get through it together. Also like this video. Coming up next is Evenings LA. As always, stay informed, stay smiling, and stay at LA for more.